uh, we have got a uh, image of the priest. So uh, some people are saying that uh, Indus Valley civilization is a theocratic society. The priest would... <laughs>
So if you see the agricultural inputs or for various uses in our day-to-day -day life, iron plays an important role, very, very important role. Still, you can now, now also you can uh, see the importance of iron in our day-to-day -day life. So once the iron has been discovered and the implements uh, have been started making, uh, made by using iron, so it was entirely a different story. So what happened in the Rigvedic period is, uh, once the iron has been dis discovered, people have used iron axes, iron axes to clear the vast areas of forest. So people started clearing vast areas of forest and they have started doing agriculture. So, I mean, uh, in the earlier Vedic period, though agriculture was a secondary activity, their main, uh, this was main occupation was, or main subsistence was cattle only. So they were keeping hundreds and hundreds of cattle for the purpose of milk, for the purpose of transportation, etc. So cattle, uh, cattle rearing was their major, we can say, uh, economic activity. Apart from that, they were uh, doing the agriculture also. So by the end of the later Vedic period, we can say the predominance of agriculture. So agriculture has become the major activity of the uh, Vedic people, Vedic civilization people. So this is the brief story. And also we call this age as the historic period or history because apart from the ar archaeological sources we also have the literary sources here so at that time they have not put into writing but writing was in the uh, we can say uh, i mean various shlokas were written in recital form i mean they have kept in memory by reciting so the teachers one after the uh, the one generation after the another they were transferring that knowledge what, what was created orally that has been uh, transferred to next generations uh, by teaching them, right? So in this way, the, all the texts and the knowledge has been uh, written and kept in oral, oral manner. I mean, it was there in the mind and orally those have been transferred from one, ger one generation to another generation. So during the Guptas only, during the Guptas and uh, for that matter Shatavahanas, they have put into writing whatever the, I mean, uh, I mean literary sources are there, what are, what are the writings are there, they have been put into writing, right. So these are the <coughs> things. So for example, we have said Vedas, Vedas have been emerged here. So Vedas have been written and kept in memory only. I mean, they have kept in orally. So once the Guptan age has come, they have put into writing right so this is a, a brief introduction about the vedic civilization so when we compare with the indus valley people tremendous changes have come in the vedic age people so we will see one by one what are all those changes that have come in the uh, i mean peculiar features of the uh, vedic civilization people right so this is the brief introduction about the Vedic people. So first is, we will see the Rig Vedic period. So how the things are there in the Rig Vedic period. So briefly, if we see the time period of the Vedic civilization, it is between the period between 500, 1500 BC to 500 BC. That period is known as the mm, Vedic civilization. So you know very well by 1750, uh, according to some historians, the Indus Valley civilization has ended. So by 1750 BC, Indus Valley civilization has ended. So approximately after 250 years, 250 years after the Vedic civilization has begun. So predominantly the civilization also shifted uh, majorly from the indo saraswati region to Ganga Yamuna region. So the civilization also shifted, shifted to, shifted from uh, uh, <coughs> Indus Saraswati River system to Ganga Yamuna River system. So this is the major change. 
so the civilization that has happened uh, during the indus valley civilization is it is on the banks and the tributaries of the indus uh, indus river however the vedic civilization it happened on the uh, based on i mean the river valleys of ganga yamuna and their other tributaries so gradually it shifted in the banks of yamuna and the ganges and as the time passed by it has shifted the civilization further and further uh, moved towards the eastward east eastern eastern side of the country right so this is the brief history of the vedic civilization now we will see in detail about each and every aspect in two phases rigvedic period and uh, later vedic period so first the period between 1500 to 1000 bc this period can be considered as the uh, ved i mean uh, <coughs> rigvedic period or earlier vedic period so 500 years first 500 years in the vedic civilization period that period is known as the early vedic period right so society if you see the uh, society i mean polity of the uh, early i mean rigvedic period people so the society was organized into uh, tribes i mean small tribes called as janas so earlier we have seen people were living i mean in the stone age and an, uh, stone age stone age so people were living in small bands closely knit families they have formed as small bands and they were leading the nomadic life so by the neolithic age they have formed of settled i mean set i mean they have started in living permanent settlements so further it has grew and uh, they have formed uh, small we can say uh, communities tribes they have formed into small tribes and they have started uh, they have been started uh, they have been called as janas and the chief of that jana as called as rajan rajan uh, so here you can uh, uh, you can get a comparative analysis with the indus valley civilization also so there we could not actually know who the king or who the chief of the indus people some said that the priest uh, we have got a uh, image of the priest so uh, some people are saying that uh, indus valley civilization is a theocratic society the priest was priest was the head of the we can say kingdom or a settlement uh, that is the interpretation but however if we see in the Vedic age the rajan was the chief of a tribe right so to balance the power of the king or rajan there were <coughs> uh, four uh, four or five sabhas were there i mean groups of people were there so most important in them are sabha one thing first is sabha and next one is samiti so these two played a very important role in the administration <coughs> of a jana <coughs> right so sabha is a council of elders uh, likely including brahmins and wealthy patrians when it comes to samiti it is a large uh, assembly of the tribe possibly involving all the adult male members right so it is like a council of ministers we can say if we compare with the nowadays and the samiti is like a uh, parliament or assembly so that i mean in that way we can connect so majorly these two houses were controlling the actions of the uh, rajan so rajan is uh, effectively accountable to these two bodies right so we can say a system of limited monarchy he wasn't a king was a wasn't a hereditary uh, we can say position kingdom i mean the position of rajan was not a hereditary one so whoever uh, chooses i mean seemed fit that person has been appointed as the rajan right right so he has been chosen based on the leadership qualities in the war and also based on the public support so the concept of dharma it also guided i mean emerged during that period and the concept of dharma it has guided the uh, rajan in his duties right So we will see here there is no strong centralized uh, kinship kind of thing is there right so warfare was frequent with the fighting between the janas 
for the especially for the cows so this has been the ma major important i mean cows were playing very major important role in the lives of the Ved vedic people um, keep people were keeping cows so it has been considered as wealth so for wars have been uh, wars have been fought because of the uh, i mean for the capture of the cows so because of that reason they are called as gavisti gavisti it is war for the cows right so this is about the polity so now if, if we see the economy of the uh, earlier vedic people so predominantly they were leading a pastoral way of life so their economy is dominated by uh, we can say rearing of animals so they are primarily pastoral people so cattle was their most prized possession uh, it has uh, not only symbolized the richness and the symbol of wealth and uh, it is also used in sacrifices right so the rigveda itself mentions cows sheep goats and horses right so shifting to agriculture so though pastoralism was dominant they were practicing agriculture also right so it has agriculture has started in the neolithic era and it is started and people of uh, indus valley people uh, sorry the vedic uh, vedic people have so i mean they continued the practice of agriculture next is barter system so there was not effectively money no coin was there so people were uh, we can say involved in barter system barter system is nothing but exchange of goods exchange of goods or sometimes it includes services also so exchange of food grains clothes and metal objects has taken place right so early signs of currency also we can say some experts or some historians say that the cow itself has been used as a currency however we also see certain times like nishka so this nishka is there it is a kind of you can say jewelry so some historians say it is also this nishka suvarna nishka it is called suvarna nishka so uh, <coughs> that some historians say it has been used as a coin right so uh, we can see a brief division of labor in the rigvedic period so a division of labor with the distinct professions emerging like herdsmen farmers craftsmen etc right so also we will see a limited role when it comes to metal working so we will uh, listen the or hear the words like aya and the krishna aya krishna aya so krishna aya is likely the iron which has been discovered uh, i mean latest in the vedic period <coughs> so metal aya is mentioned and especially the krishna aya uh, the iron it have been i mean those have been there in the uh, use during the vedic period so other uh, tools we can made from stone bone and wood also can be seen here right <coughs> right so uh, gift giving in the pastoral society in the vedic society it played an, a significant role so gift of cattle and other uh, other valuables were was a significant we can say practice of the vedic people so warfare and spoils warfare was frequent with the cattle raiding become being a common practice so spoils of are like likely contributed to wealth accu wealth accumulation for some people all right so next we will see the social practices so if you see the social practices first one is uh, family life is uh, if you see so family was the basic social unit a patria it had a patriarchal structure the grihapati father uh, he was called as the grihapati he remained the authority of the family so if you see the earlier vedic period so women enjoyed relatively more freedom compared to later later vedic periods so certain women we we, we hear the names of certain women who have well educated well educated in the earlier vedic uh, uh, i mean uh, earlier vedic period right so so they also choose husbands in some cases so swayamvara system was also there so women women have chosen their own husbands and even some educated women 
they have composed uh, we can say hymn also right so we can uh, get this information from the rigveda right social classes if we see so briefly social classes certain uh, division of labor is also taking place uh, certain social classes also uh, emerge and uh, we also see a hint of emerging uh, emergence of varna system varna system a peculiar feature which has began in the vedic period only so here if we see uh, not exactly varna system uh, has uh, refined here by this time but we can see the emergence of varna system the priests were there they consisted brahmins warrior class was emerged separate warrior class has emerged next herdsmen and cultivators so they uh, called to be uh, they came to be known as vaishyas in the later period and also the warrior class kratya kshatriyas they i mean they have also become a kind of distinct class apart from that possible laborers so they a reference to dasa dasas exist so they might be uh, we can say possible labor class right so livelihood if you see primarily it is a pastoral society uh, cattle being the mark of wealth and used uh, also used in sacrifices so agriculture is also practices crops like barley and wheat have been cultivated trade also existed uh, with the hint of barter system and also uh they have exchanged uh, in cowries and also uh, the metal we have discussed uh nishka so that has so also has been used sometimes as a medium of exchange so rituals were uh, an important practice or part and parcel of the rigvedic people so religious uh, religious ceremonies played a central role in the rigvedic society so the hymns of the rigveda themselves Uh, are primarily prayers and the uh, praises offered to the various gods so sacrifices involved animals like cows and horses they are common uh, presided over by priests so these rituals aim to appease the gods ensure prosperity and maintain cosmic order right right so here chariot if we see the extra, uh, extra we can say the i mean leisure time activities of these people were chariot races were very very important activity in their lives so apart from that they consumed soma and sura these are two we can say beverages or kind of alcoholic drinks consumed by the vedic people at that time so soma and sura were the drinks religion if we see so polytheism was uh, practice uh, during that time polytheism means uh, they were worshiping worship of more than one god worship of more than one god is known as polytheism so the current hinduism also it is known for polytheism worship of many gods so at that time also rigvedic time also they were uh, the practice of polytheism was in existence so majorly the uh, gods of nature gods of nature associated with the nature they have been worshiped so indra agni uh, so he indra resembles thunder rain and war agni resembles the god of fire sacrifices and the communication surya the sun god varuna the god of cosmic order truth and justice ushas the goddesses of dawn representing new beginnings so in this way the nature gods of nature have been worshiped right right so here also we can also we can see the practice of hentoism so hentoism is nothing but so among the gods band of gods one god uh, will be believed as supreme god while they also accept the existence of other gods so that is known as hentoism so at that time uh, indra kind of he has given the primary place so he has uh, i mean he has believed as the topmost god right so next uh, they have also acknowledged the existence of other gods if we see the rituals and sacrifices so they have formed the core of the religious practice right animal heart sacrifice has took place so the rituals they uh, aimed at appeasement of gods and uh, seeking favors like uh, rains 
and uh, seeking victory in the wars and also prayers have been made for uh, children all right so the couple made prayers for the i mean so that they can get children so soma so it is a sacred psychoactive beverage called soma it played a significant role it was consumed by the priests and possibly warriors during rituals believed to uh, induce a trance like state and to facilitate communication with the divine all right so situation of uh, women if you see uh, women were relatively uh, freer here and uh, they had lot of choices here so if you compare with the later vedic period so later during the later vedic period kind of their uh, we can say freedom has been reduced for women so here so relatively they enjoyed more freedom uh, than the later periods so swayamvara existed they were choosing their own husbands and uh, some people uh, some women are well educated and even they composed poems the composed uh, poems or hymns or mantras right so they have received some formal education so they had knowledge of vedic rituals and uh, it was necessary for their participation right they could have also attended the social gatherings and possibly even assemblies such as sabha in certain cases right so uh, we can say uh, as the time passed by shifting of roles so the father held the authority within the family and the social exceptions uh, emphasized women's role as wives and mothers right so this is the situation of the women right so this is the, uh, broadly about the vedic age or the vedic period so what are all the things that we have seen now we will see about the we will understand few things about the uh, later vedic period so the period between 1000 bc to 500 bc this period can be known as the later vedic period so rigvedic society after rigveda the samaveda uh, or second we keep it as yajurveda next is samaveda or samveda next is atharvaveda atharva veda so these three vedas have been composed during this time so this period is also that's why it is also known as the later vedic period so if we compare with the rigvedic period rigvedic period is considered as more egalitarian more ega more egalitarian i mean more equal society so the whatever the social divisions are there they have become more and more stronger here more stronger here and they have become more pronounced comparative comparatively women have lost their freedom and we can say a brief hint of caste system emerging here a brief hint of caste system emerging here so whatever the varna system is there it has taken roots and it has kind of become hereditary only so that varna system kind of become immobile and uh, we can see also a brief hint of caste system emerging right so if we see the polity right so we can say the vedic period later vedic periods are decline of tribal structures and the rise of powerful hereditary monarch monarchies so kind of small kingdom kingdoms uh, taken shape here right so the concept of divine kingship so it has it has emerged which means uh, which means the king so it has been ordained divine i mean he has been ordained divinely i mean by the order of the god itself he is ruling over the people so that that is the concept of divine kinship right so uh, i mean people have come to be ruled by the kings which has kind of become a hereditary position hereditary position right so the earlier kind of democratic symbol symbols of democracy and the republic uh, nature sabha and samiti they have gradually lost their importance and the king uh, <coughs> he has become more and more powerful right so the king's council which comprised of advisors and officials 
it become more and more influences so majorly the brahmins the brahmins constituted the brahmins constituted constituted the major we can say compo composition in the king's council right bureaucracy in the other officials if we see so there was purohita in the i mean <coughs> in the royal court and uh, senani was there he is also known as the commander chief commander of the army uh, sangrahit he was the treasurer gramani uh, he was the village headman uh, spasha or spice or messengers so they have also helped in with the intelligence gathering so in this way kind of bureaucracy has emerged in the court of the king so to maintain the kingdom kingdom taxes were levied on agricultural produce and possibly on the uh, we can say the cattle also warfare was frequent and uh, they were fighting for both the territory and also for the resources so the development of iron weapon iron weaponry and the chariot warfare they increase the lethality and the scale of war plagues so here also we will see a kind of uh, tax bali so people who were who are working voluntarily for the king uh, i mean by means of doing service do, by doing voluntary service uh, that i mean they kind of paying their taxes in the form of labor so that is known as bali so in the rigvedic period it was kind of voluntary people were willingly doing this giving this bali but in the uh, later vedic period it has become kind of compulsory so people have to do compulsory service uh, to the king uh, that is the way of paying taxes right so if we see this uh, <coughs> society here so the uh, varna system kind of become more prominent here right so economy if we see the shift from uh, from pastoral to settled agriculture so here the pastoral uh, rigvedic period was a pastoral society now it thoroughly shifted to agriculture agriculture dominant economy right so shift from a pri prim primarily pastoral economy to a settled agricultural one that has occurred we also see the expansion of trade uh, i mean trade so trade routes trade routes have been established and uh, they have carried goods like textiles metals and spices so right so if we see the evolution of currency so cowrie shells they gradually gave way to the uh, we can say minted coins uh, of the minted coins like precious uh, made of go uh, metals like gold silver and copper etc so they have facilitated larger transactions and made trade more efficient so apart from that we will also see the rise of towns and cities so the agricultural increased agricultural production and the surplus so this led to the rise of permanent settlements and fortified towns so in this way we can see a brief uh, urbanization again after the industrial civilization also right so these uh, towns often grow around centers of power or trade routes catering to the needs of the non agricultural population so apart from that craft specialization has also taken place here so artisans became skilled in metal working pottery weaving and other crafts etc all right so rule of the varna system we see if we see the varna system which included four we can say categories of people so the it influenced the economic roles vaishyas were primarily farmers merchants artisans shudra served as laborers the upper varnas the brahmins and kshatriyas they often controlled the land and the resources so in this way they played kind of uh, we can say dominant role in the society right <coughs> so trade with different regions has also taken place so as the surplus increase uh, and also the metal works met, uh, the i mean expertise in the metal works increase so people started doing trade with other regions increasingly right so if we see the society so the caste system took roots here and the varna system it uh, uh, we can say it uh, 
बिकम ए ए रिजिड सिस्टम रिजिड फोर वी कैन से फोर वर्ना सिस्टम दैट इज ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय एंड शूद्रास सो दीज फोर वर्नास यू नो वेरी वेल एंड देयर रेस्पेक्टिव रोल्स सो हियर वी कैन सी द इनक्रीज द रोल ऑफ ब्राह्मण्स सो काइंड ऑफ दे बिकम वन थिंग एडवाइजर्स एडवाइजर्स टू किंग्स एंड दे बिकम इंपॉर्टेंट इन द काउंसिल ऑफ द किंग्स नेक्स्ट इज इन द रिचुअल्स सो इफ ए पर्सन वॉन्ट टू टॉक टू गॉड सो द प्रीस्ट बिकेम द इंटरमीडिएटरी so the priest will conduct all the rituals right so in this way the i mean the brahmins have become uh, very very important in the society right next is patriarch uh, patriarchal system has further sustained uh, strengthened so the society become more, more and more patriarchal men held authority within the family and the public life practices like child marriage and the sati they began to emerge further restricting women's freedom apart from that uh, purushardas purushardas or four <coughs> sorry not purusha purushardas the four stages of life these are known as ashramas so these ashramas have also emerged so that is brahmacharya it is the student life focusing on education and a religion so grihastya it is the i mean life of the life of a household household here he has a person is expected to get married and to produce children and vanaprastha so it is a kind of retirement living a simple a simple life in the forest focused on meditation and spiritual pursuits so sanyasa here uh, the we can say time of renunciation the person here he will forego the identity he will forego his identity and completely detaching oneself from the worldly right so these two stages of life have emerged so the purushardas i was mentioning they have also kind of developed in this stage only those are those uh, no, four purushardas are there that uh, those are dharma artha kama ahimsa so kind of these stage ashramas and purushardha sorry ashramas and purushardhas they kind of went hand in hand so they were supporting each other so a person has to has expected in his life to achieve all these four things first is he has to follow dharma and artha he has to earn money to support his family and dependents he has to karma he has to do his karma whatever destined by him and the moksha at the end of his life at the i mean later part of his life he has to focus on moksha moksha is liberation uh, from the cycle of birth and death so moksha is nothing but the liberation of liberation from the cycle of uh, life and death or birth and death so these ashramas ashramas of life and purushardhas they have emerged during this time right so apart from that urbanization begins so because of the fortified settlements and because of the surplus in agriculture and increasing because of the increasing we can say crafts work urbanization has begin has begun in the society uh, so cities have become started emerging next regional uh, variations also we can see so the varna system provided a bra- broad framework social practices and customs they varied across different regions and kingdoms right so this is uh, this is about the society in the later vedic period so if we see the <coughs> uh, we can say religious practices or the status of religion in the later vedic period <coughs> so uh, the rigveda it gave way to more philosophical approach in this i uh, mean age right <coughs> so we will uh, we will see the rise of new texts like which are appendix appendix to vedas those are brahman brahmanas aranyakas and upas upanishad so upanishads generally contain the philosophical thoughts 
philosophical thoughts they contained upanishads contain brahmanas and aranyakas so majorly they contain how to lead a life in the during the stage i mean later two stages varna ashramas in the later two varna ashrama dharmas those are uh, sanyasa uh, these are vanaprastha and sanyasa so how to lead life in those periods these books have told that right so ritualistic uh, elaboration of the ritual practices also we will see so the practice of rituals kind of become compulsory kind of to attain moksha right so rise of new deities also we can see so the dominance of trimurti is here the trimurti is here the brahma brahma vishnu and shiva vishnu and shiva kind of became these trimurtis became dominant and the nature based gods like indra varuna agni kind of they have been relegated to secondary position i mean it's not derogatory but because of the changes and uh, i mean as the time passed by human i mean people got more and more control over their life and they started fearing for the natural uh, natural forces kind of rain uh, i mean wind etc so kind of they controlled uh, they gained control over their lives and kind of they stopped fearing about the natural forces so the basically earlier gods they are associated with the uh, natural forces like rain heat water i mean earth etc so sunset sunrise etc so however as they grew confidence these uh, i mean these nature based gods also kind of become secondary and the three gods the trimurtis brahma vishnu and maheshwar or shiva they become more and more prominent right so uh, while gods like indra and agni they remained important prominence of other deities like vishnu and shiva it has increased <coughs> right so concept of karma karma is not uh, nothing but action and a reaction so every action will have a reaction it is karma is that every person will uh, i mean he will uh, realize whatever the actions he or she is doing they have to face the consequences if uh, one person is doing good he will also see the good if a person is doing bad he will uh, in the future for see the bad so that is karma so this uh, karma siddhanta has emerged and also we will see the concept of moksha also emerging here so moksha is liberation 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 from what liberation from birth and death the we can say in your unending cycle unending cycle of uh, birth and death that is moksha so if a person neither uh, do i uh, mean neither have merit neither <coughs> nor have we can say bad accumulation of bad things then that person will be attained i mean he will be lib- liberated from the cycle of uh, birth and death and he will attain moksha right right so this could be attained through various paths including knowledge gnana devotion bhakti and right action karma yoga however uh, in the later part of the later vedic period we will see the rituals rituals have become important so it has been prop- i mean it has been said that so without performing rituals a person cannot attain uh, moksha so because of that the we can say the religion the religious practices whatever there at that time ritualistic practices they kind of come to be criticized so because of that uh, we can say revolutionary uh, thoughts have come uh, in the form of buddhism and jainism so priest i mean here the priestly class become uh, kind of uh, dominant and uh, we can say dominating and the ritual practices become kind of uh, compulsory and the common people were could not cope with the uh, we can say lots of ritual rituals that have to be performed so because of this we can see some revolutionary religions or religious thoughts like buddhism and jainism so this is about the religion so if we see the status of women we have discussed already 
so they have lost a certain freedom and rights so they were largely excluded from the social uh, education and the religious rituals that were uh, central to the rigvedic society right so participation in public assemblies also it ka kind of become restricted from women so they have confined to domestic sphere uh, and they uh, they have emphasized their roles have been emphasized as good wives and good mothers right so their primary duties revolved around managing the household and uh, raising and taking care of children and elderly rise of child marriage also I, uh, we can see the practice of child marriage has become prevalent during this period so this means girls were ma being married in the earlier ages only right patriarchal structure further strengthened so patriarchal system has uh, further strengthened strengthened in the later vedic period restrictions on movement have also come to uh, come to place so the women's freedom of movement may have, uh, they have become curtailed so they were expected to be confined to the domestic sphere and dependent on the husbands and male guardians unequal treatment also kind of emerges here right so sadi so it uh, become uh, become kind of more uh, prevalent so in the Rig rigvedic period also so it uh, began to appear in some sections of society a widow was expected to sacrifice her herself when her husband dies right right so here holistically if you see we can see a deterioration of the uh, in the status of women when we compare with the vedic i mean uh, rigvedic period so this is about the society so this is the broad uh, discussion about the earlier vedic period and also the later vedic period how the things have changed uh, during this period all right so now we will see some questions that are asked from this topic previously first question it is asked in 2017 the question is with reference to uh, difference between the culture of rigvedic aryans and indus valley people which of the following statements is or or correct so uh, mostly you will get a question you can get a question in the prelims or for that matter in the mains the comparative analysis between the indus valley people and the vedic people first option is rigvedic aryans used the coat of mail uh, and helmet in warfare whereas the people of indus valley civilization did not leave any evidence of using them yes this is a correct statement so we do not find any evidence of indus valley people using these two equipment second one is rigvedic aryans knew gold silver and copper whereas indus valley people knew only copper and iron so this is a wrong statement indus valley people did not know iron so it is uh, came into existence and discovery only after indus valley civilization so this is a wrong statement third one is rigvedic aryans had domesticated the horse whereas there is no evidence of indus valley people having been aware of this animal so this is a correct statement we do not find any evidence of horse in the indus valley civilization we will see the evidence of horse uh, with the rigvedic people only so the correct option is option c statement 1 and 3 are correct second question is uh, it is asked in 2012 the question is the religion of early vedic aryans was primarily of the options are bhakti b is option b is image worship and yagnas uh, worship of nature and yagnas worship of nature and bhakti so bhakti you can say predominantly predominantly it is a feature of medieval india not the ancient india that to that vedic period we cannot see the concept of bhakti so it is predominantly the medieval uh, we can say characteristic feature of medieval india so image Im image worship is also not there at the at that time right so yagnas were there but the image worship was not there so worship of nature and the nature based gods was there and also yagnas was there so the correct option is option c worship of nature and yagnas so this is the uh, religion of the early vedic people right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining see you next time until then have a good day